Good afternoon, and welcome to my daily chat. Uh, this is episode 464, and the topic today is after the breakup. Um, grief, loss, and moving on. I think that's the title I made. I hope he's right. <laughs> Before I jump into that, um, let me introduce myself. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. Helping strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And every day we do these talks called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. Messages for the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. Speaking to the ladies. And today's episode is number 464. Yes, I've done a lot of these. I'm doing a bit early today because I actually have an early dinner tonight, so I'm doing it before I get ready, so I'm actually getting out of the way. Um, and the topic today again, and this is episode 464, and the topic today again is after the breakup. Dealing with, dealing with loss, grief, and moving on. And I want to say these three areas because, let's just say it simply this way, most people skip to the third step. They're moving on. Next one, like next, next, move on, it's fine. The reality though, is that for many people, they ignore the first two steps. And this is an error in approach. And I'm saying this from the gentle way of saying it because many of you out there, including myself, have been through the um, post-relationship um, recuperation maybe is a way of putting it. I'm not sure if it's the right word, but I'm playing with these words because it's really true. For most of us, we go through a relationship if we're in, I didn't qualify that. It's true if in a relationship you're invested. If you're in a relationship where your heart is open and you're connected and you're feeling wonderful and loving the relationship, the challenge that most people have is they don't know how to deal with that when it goes away. And I've talked in recent broadcasts, in recent broadcasts, if I put the framing in right, how so many relationships are codependent. And that codependency is this enmeshment that keeps you so hooked in to the other person. That way it's probably better than showing this way. So that you're feeling this um, imagined gap being filled by somebody else. When they leave, the gap becomes vacant again. And it hurts like hell. Now, even in a conscious relationship, which I talked about yesterday or the day before, yesterday I think it was, but conscious relationship, there's still going to be a feeling of loss because even though it's not taking something from you, the person you were joined in together with and you played together and you added to each other's lives, if they've left, for whatever reason, you're dealing with grief, loss, and moving on. It's three things, actually. Grief? Okay, grief's now in there as well. But this is the thing. If you've been in a relationship of any time, any length, any depth, your heart's been invested. The same as when you have grief for losing a pet, a family member, a job. Same is true in relationships. But most people tend to say, oh, it's fine, I'm going to get over it. I'm going to move right along, I'll find somebody, it'll be no problem. Yes, in a way you can suppress the feelings or cover up the feelings by going to a new relationship with a new person, but it ain't going to last. What I mean is the relationship may last, but that mood won't last. What will happen, nine times out of ten, is that your suppressed, repressed, contained, controlled, imprisoned, <laughs> you get the sense of the words I'm using, upset emotion, pain, hurt, suffering, will come to the surface. And unless your partner, your future partner, or the new partner you've joined with, has got a background in this teaching, understanding how to be compassionate, caring, and loving, which most people aren't prepared for, to handle somebody else's stuff, then you're going to find yourself being in a place where your um, upset and hurt feelings isn't being supported, isn't being healed, isn't being counseled, coached, caring. And this is an unfortunate approach. And my point about this is to make sure that you can understand that for most people, the best thing to do after a breakup is not to move right along. So that moving on third step is intentionally the third step because there's two things before that. Which is dealing with all the upset, the feelings, the hurt feelings, the loss, the grief, the suffering, the wounding first. How you deal with that? That's a question I'm going to get into in a moment, but I want to make sure you get this point, because so many people just, um, well, simple way to do it, they numb it out. Whether it's by being in another relationship, or it's simply going out and, well, drowning their sorrows, because enough people do that, still, some people still do that. But going out and partying and playing and, and doing things to um, forget about the bad relationship. 
that only works to a degree. It numbs things, it suppresses things, and again, as I mentioned earlier, it suppresses and controls them. It doesn't release them. And my advice to you, my counsel to you, my encouragement to you is if you've been through a relationship and you had a breakup, especially if it's recent, I highly encourage you to be honest with yourself. I highly encourage you to be real with what's happened. And I highly encourage you to get support from somebody you trust, be it a friend that you can count on, really count on, or a professional like myself, yes, I've been trained in this, <laughs> to help you heal. The biggest challenge people have in a relationship when they're going for the next one is they haven't, they haven't cleaned up the baggage from the past one. I haven't used baggage in a long time. I guess I can use that term again. And this is the thing. Relationships will give you things to work on. I talked about that in a couple of broadcasts ago about how being in a relationship is going to raise your opportunity. It's give you the opportunity to grow and be more um, sensitive to things. So you get triggered, you get patterns, stuff will show up, everything happens as well. When the relationship's over, you've got, a lot of, you've got a bunch of suitcases, emotionally speaking, carrying along with you into the next relationship. It's not, your, it's not your partner's job or responsibility to take those bags from you. It's your responsibility to unpack, release, and resolve what's in the bags. So that baggage, and I'm using that metaphor clumsily, is really about how you take yourself in hand. You take yourself into your own heart, and you do the necessary work to heal. The wounds, the hurt feelings, the judgments, the blame, all the upsets, the guilt, resentment, all these different things that came out of the relationship, because they're in there. The truth is that you can't keep going on that way, relationship after relationship after relationship. As I mentioned a couple of days ago, um, referencing Barbara DeAngelis, who spoke, I saw her speak at the event, Ashley Degape, 18 months ago, and she used this analogy, and I like the analogy, so I'm using it here. So props to Barbara for this one. She talks about how after a relationship ends, if we don't do the work necessary to resolve the pain and wounds in our heart, basically what happens is we create, in a way it's like scar tissue. She uses the analogy of basically being icebergs on an ocean, where the ocean is our loving. It's our heart's ability to love and express and bring things forward. But the ice is on top is that suppression of, or the ignor ignorance of, or the... Um, unresolved issues you didn't deal with in that past relationship. So initially that's okay, because it's just a little bit of ice, a lot of ocean, it's fine. But as time goes by and relationships reoccur and you go through cycles of relationship again and again and again, if you don't do the work, and I'm saying if you don't take care of yourself and heal those wounds, like an ocean being covered in ice, you're slowly and surely going to cover up the ability to love by this numbness. And that numbness means your ability to love is diminished. Now, if you want to be in a relationship where you can't love that much, go right ahead. But I think for, if you're watching my broadcast, you know that loving is important to me. It's, one, it's my message. It's my work. And it's also what my second book's about. And that loving ability, that ability to love, can only come out fully, only come out fully, when you pull back the ice. The ocean can only um, be flowing when the ice is removed, which means when the loving can flow again is when you've removed those blocks, those numbing practices that suppress the loving. I'm going around in the circles a few times to make this point very clear, which is this. You deserve the best in relationship. You deserve the best in your life. And sometimes it's, it's like uh, nailing your shoe to the ground. You can't move unless you do the work to take the nail out. He said, no, I just keep popping up. I, whatever. So my point to you is this. If you're walking around with a broken heart, you're walking around with a uh, band-aided heart because you haven't done any work, Stop hurting yourself. Stop going to relationship after relationship, hoping to get the cure and be found okay and, and, to be, and to not get what you want. Because the more you do this, the less you're going to be able to love. It's, an, it's, an, um, it's what it is. <laughs> I was thinking of an analogy didn't come up. So my recommendation to you is get some support, get some help from a professional, counselor, coach, counselor like myself. Counselor, coach, counselor, that was interesting counselor <laughs> counselor or coach or th even therapist if you really want to do the work if you really want to be available to love to have an amazing relationship you must you must seek out help and get that wounding healed in your heart you can do it yourself but if you've got somebody who can help you it ex expedites the process and it's also going to guarantee you clean out all the, all the junk and from for your sake I, I'm hoping for you that you'll choose love choose a relationship choose a um, a path that allows
massage his love fully once again. That is my recommendation to you. And if, you, if you've been afraid of dealing with it, let me say it this way. The less you deal with your past wounds, the more you're going to have baggage in the future. And frankly, I don't want to recommend anybody walks around with a, with a steamer trunk full of crap. Well, wounds, I'll put it that way. So my advice to you, my encouragement and recommendation is to get the help, as I've said so many times. Speaking of which, just a quick couple of plugs. I'm doing a quick broadcast. I said I'm doing this earlier than usual because usually this is a 5 p.m. Pacific time talk, but I have dinner plans, so I'm doing this early. Um, the first thing I recommend always with my clients is to learn to love yourself. Self-love is one of those over, um, overlooked and minimalized practices. If you learn how to love yourself truly the right way and you learn actually how it feels to be loved by yourself, it changes the whole ball game. And I know it's one of the first steps I do with my clients is self-love. So that's why I created the self-love practice, a guided meditation, a, moving, a, a mirror meditation practice that I created with audio tracks and with a, a guidebook that will help you learn to love yourself again. If you're carrying around wounds inside or if you're just not feeling lovable, this practice will help you reconnect back to your heart, to your loving, and able to express it in a beautiful way. And I'll put the links in the comments below. Um, sorry, I'm, trying, I'm, I'm doing two things at once in my head. I'm going to put them in the comments below and also give it verbally so you know how to get there. My website, as same as all my social media, is my name, which is Barry Selby. So you go to barryselby.com forward slash self love or one word, you need to check it out there. If you want to get some help and you want some real support, I invite you to check out me <laughs> by booking a discovery session with me. It's a free gift from me to you. And basically, if you go to my website again, barryselby.com forward slash chat this time, again, it'll be in the comments afterwards, you can. Um, book a time and fill out the form and we can have a chat. That's simple. Um, this, by the way, in case you haven't seen my broadcast before, is Facebook Live. I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, usually. Yes, this is at 3 p.m. Pacific time. I had another commitment today, usually 5 p.m. And I also put these in other places. So if you're watching this the replay, you may be watching this on my business page on Facebook, because it goes out there too, which is barryselby.author. I also put it onto YouTube, so if you'll be watching my YouTube channel, which is also Barry Selby, and the playlist is Messages, messages from the Masculine. So from, again, Messages from the Masculine. And that's also the name of my podcast. So you can also listen to them if you're driving around doing other things. You can go to my podcast, subscribe, download, listen to all my talks there. I'm slowly adding that library, but my Facebook and YouTube collection are pretty much up to date by the day. So with that, I think there's any, any questions. Um, any questions, comments, please put them below in the comments. If you're watching on Facebook or watching the replay on YouTube, I will respond to them. Um, and I'll give you the links. So if you want to reach out to me. Um, and that's it. Thank you for watching. Thanks for being here as always. I will um, be back in tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time, probably on time this time. Don't have any plans right now for tomorrow afternoon. We'll see. But I appreciate you watching. Any questions, comments? Appreciate you being here. And um, take care of yourselves. Love yourself, appreciate yourself, and do the work to heal. That's how you get to have an amazing relationship. And with that, I thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.